Hello fellow beer friends, wonderful people, good evening, welcome back to our very channel, good afternoon and also good morning. It all depends where you are getting our video from, we please urge you to do subscribe, like, share and uh, stay glued to this very channel. Now we tell you that uh, Nigerian government, Tunubu and Co, Shetima, all of them, the plans to arrest Maze Ema is on, the secret plans against him, secret meetings here and there discussions here and there nobody none of them said how may we you know capture asari dokubo who is a terrorist who has confessed to have been killing and who has confessed to be the unknown gunman in southeast that buari hired him now tunubu invited him and gave him the job to continue the killing but something happened this man they are calling now simon Eba. Is the man that countered Asare Dokubo just gave him a very tip, small tip, that that shocked Asare Dokubo made him to confess and say Igbo should go. Now, this, the, the plan and their discussion on television is this. Let me release this video so that you will hear how and what they are planning against Mazi Simon Eba. TV. A continuous use of the kinetic and the non-kinetic because kinetic may not do it alone. Continuous use of it, you know, with a new energy, with a new verbal, you know, a new zeal, you know, and probably um, some change in tactics. The strategy might be okay to take them out, you know, but we might need some tactical change. And that will come um, from the ingenuity or the creativity of the new men at the hands of authority. All right. I mean, a lot of ingenuity, uh, kinetic and non-kinetic. Let me come to you, Stephen. Um, this wanting destruction of human lives and property and, of course, the economy of the Southeast uh, can, you know, really boomerang uh, to cause more damage, not only to the Southeast region as being witnessed, but by extension, the entire Nigerian polity. Uh, the new zeal that President Bola Tinubu has brought into governance, I mean, security-wise, can it be, you know, reenacted in the southeast and check this, uh, you know, wanton killing in that region? Yes. Uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, uh, looking at it, uh, the IPOB issue, uh, if you want to look at it historically, I don't think it started with IPOB. It started right from the days of Biafra to Masob to current IPOB and the factions that we now have in IPOB. Now, what is happening in the Southeast? Of course, it will affect other uh, regions of the country because okay. there are other uh, traders or people that indulge in buying and selling that travel also to the Southeast to do their. Mm -hmm their businesses and come out of this region to and take their whatever that took them to the Saudis to their own region as well. So the economic activity is not only going to affect uh, the Saudi region alone, considering what is happening, because uh, just the way I said, there are other people or traders that travel all the way from other regions to go to the Saudis to do their business. But the way the current government is going, what they've been agitating for, because I've heard where they said they've been uh, sidelined in uh, terms of uh, government governance and all that. The, most especially, they said the, the previous government did not carry the Saudis along in the uh, governance structure. But what we have now, uh, the current president under uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has uh, at least appointed one of the service chiefs, you know, from the Saudis, especially uh, from uh, the Enugu state. Precisely. So, I've heard or read where uh, IPOB youths and some youths from the Southeast have ap ap appreciated and applauded the appointment of uh, the Saudis and the Saudis step in the right direction to see that uh, the current government will carry the Saudis along in terms of at the moment. So, what we are seeing on, on ground is the possibility that with other appointments that will come on board and possibly other projects that will go further present along that region we see that well, so the, the whole uh, tide yeah. okay back to you 
critics that say that the federal government is what you know it's still in between its legs simply because it's not engaging the Finnish government over the treacherous directives of one man, Simeon Epa, who is not in Nigeria, but is issuing orders to the fractional IPOP members to kill, to maim, to shut down the entire socio-economic activities of a people in a region. Another level at a different uh, trans transnational level, and there might be questions around jurisprudence, uh, questions around conventions, you know. And for you know, Simon Ekpa, in the opinion of, of uh, the Finnish government, may not be breaking any law. You know, there's so many complications around this. So, when there's a crisis of jurisprudence like that, it takes patience for national governments involved, you know, to navigate the process, you know. So, these processes might be on without uh, no. I can never really tell. It might be the person to talk in the circumstance might be maybe somebody from a high up there in the foreign affairs ministry, as the case could be, or maybe a top security operative, you know. But I don't want to believe that government is just silent on the antics of below that you just mentioned. You know, but what is most important is um, our own local politics. You know, what are we doing? Our own local security, uh, security architecture or ecosystem or arrangement, as the case could be. How well are we able to deal with um, the crisis um, in the southeast, you know, within our own locality? And of course, it is tried in international relations. In international of course, I have to say that you know, um, international global politics, your global standing is a, is a reflection of your local politics. If our condition so is not criminogenic, there's no kind of order that Simon Ekwa can give to the locals here, and, for, for, and they will be able to carry it out. It would not uh, be possible for them to carry out orders, you know, if we get the arts right. Strengthening uh, fighting forces, you know, boosting their morale, you know, and of course we have the new sheriffs in town who we think should be able to bring in new energy, you know, to deal with this malaise. You know, the tactics may not necessarily change. It should be a combination of both um, um, hard and soft power because, you know, these guys are already deploying hard, hard power, and there's a sense in saying that sometimes soft power. Persuasion, conversation, you know, using, you know, pineal molders from that area, assuring them, you know, of a brighter future, like my colleague said. And, you know, it might go a long way in mitigating what um, concerns they have, you know, as long as it's not ideological, like Boko Haram, for instance. When it becomes ideological, when it's ideological, it's much more doctrinal, you know, much more. It towards nihilism and of course um, you find them just fighting for the sake of fighting. I'm not sure these fellows are fighting for the sake of fighting, they are fighting for a cause. Are Why can't we address that cause? They are wanting killings. Let yeah. me come to you again. Injustices against Ndibo is what is killing Nigeria and will continue to kill Nigeria until Nigeria will finish. Yes, if you refuse to address the cause of the issue, and then you want to address the issue without addressing the cause, you know you will not solve that problem. Mm -hmm. So the issue is this. What brought about the seat at home? Is it not after they abducted Mazinam Dekano, they hired Asari Dokobo and Nigerian army to go invade that region in the name of uh, unknown government, you know, killing the people in gorilla war hide and seek game they're not coming clean because if they come clean we'll know that oh this war has started again but they will kill and hide and deny that they are not the one that killed but something has happened to them of recent <laughs> they are no longer going there as frequent as they wish to go there because they may collect or enter their waterloo i'm telling you yes it's a very good news for beer friends that your land is no longer safe for terrorist group. Thank you and uh, God bless you.